Welcome everybody to a new video in which I will offer my thoughts around full self-driving in China and what it means from an investment perspective. So I'll cover a little bit about Tesla's approach in China and globally and also we'll talk about the latest updates, what you see behind here, uh, NEO's world model and how that all chimes in. Uh, you heard me talk about uh, Elon Musk's comments uh, during an earnings call, maybe it was even Q1 earnings call this year, in which he spoke spoke on the challenges that Tesla is actually facing in China launching FSD and uh, the problem he described in his words were mainly focused around the problem of accessing data so that the Tesla team is actually working on ways of uh, sourcing like publicly available data when it comes to for example um, solving challenges around bus lanes in China which are working differently to what they're working in the West. So that was just something that Elon Musk mentioned on the earnings call and I said you know it's unlikely that Tesla would get um, some sort of a deal that makes Tesla exempt from uh, you know data processing uh, when it comes as an American company processing Chinese data as well as um, you know all of the restrictions that come around uh, chips, chips purchases and uh, feeding data out of China into the US in order to train data there. Um, I, I said what I was publicly stating was my uh, um, summary there that this would not be allowed by China. But then what happened next is that Tesla actually launched FSD in China at least for I think the latest hardware right. So some users do now get FSD in China. However I have to say I was just lately in China and tried to get my hands on FSD Tesla uh, with uh, the Tesla sales team there um, and that didn't work out uh, as I um, yeah, were not able to get a test drive with FSD. So I'm not entirely sure like how widespread it really is with users in China but I do observe all of the videos from Tesla coming out of China. Um, I'll talk more a little bit about what might be the background here from a government perspective. Uh, just letting you know Tesla has launched FSD after these comments by Elon Musk that it's a major challenge and possibly uh, won't even happen. Um, they did do that and in my opinion the verdict here is that first of all they rushed on doing that in order to get sales back on track. China is the only growing market for Tesla last year. Um, this year may even be a different story. Um, so I think launching FSD when seeing that most competitors out there for example Huawei and Li Auto uh, are really you know having such products in the market or Xiaopong and of course also Neo but mainly back then with the uh, Neo Pilot and the Neo City Pilot um, on a different path more on that in a second. Tesla was really kind of desperate to launch their own thing and obviously it's the big goal of Elon Musk to have it you know FSD available globally of course. Now it was a surprise right that they managed to do that in China but as I said I think they possibly used a workaround as such that they you know have maybe a condensed model that they can train locally on China with some uh, limited resources in terms of chips and also maybe data. Um, and that in a sense confirms something which I would like to use at, at one of the main summary points of this video here which is that um, this whole narrative built around uh, there is a need for as much data as possible to train FSD may actually not hold true in the future and Tesla's launch of FSD in China may actually be a proof of that because the videos that are coming out are actually quite strong so it does really seem like this FSD approach by Tesla in China despite being possibly a workaround and limited as such that they really still don't get the Chinese data explicitly out of the country being able to train it in the US and send it back to the fleet that sort of stuff I think is still off the table but FSD was launched and it's working and it seems to be on top of Huawei even so really is a, a tremendous move by Tesla there but in a sense I think it also proves that this strong point of uh, you know you need millions of cars on the road and billions of data collected may actually not even that important um, to get there in the end which is more significant for the others for the Chinese players than it is for Tesla in my opinion. Now 
The next point it possibly proves is that maybe there is not that much need for processing power. Um, I've been quite skeptical about those narratives, um, especially after DeepSeek evolved, of how much processing power is actually necessary, like this whole investor narrative of, you know, you need to buy as much NVIDIA GPUs as possible in order to, um, you know, have the strongest AI. I think DeepSeek proved how much efficiency gains can be made through other means, not necessarily through processing power. And I think at the launch of FSD China by Tesla actually is proof of that as well, because I don't think Tesla does have this build up capacity in China and possibly has worked with a distilled condensed model somehow um, if they're even training Chinese data explicitly or if this is just a port of the US FSD model and they bring it to China, which could be true because um, one of the negatives around this whole FSD launch in China, which by the way is uh, impressive, but uh, the main criticism towards that is that it's breaking still quite a few um, uh, rules when it comes to driving through, uh, you know, strike strike through lanes and stuff like that, which uh, immediately gets you a fine in China if you're um, driving like that. So uh, the practicality of that is still in doubt. Uh, but anyways, the two points I want to make so far, miles collected and processing power don't seem that much important anymore if you look at this FSD launch in, in China. And then the second is the approach, uh, which long has been seemingly been kind of a, a mode or uh, meaning a defensible um, kind of uncopyable um, approach that Tesla is using with its end-to-end -end models. We've seen Chinese competitors and again that's possibly one of the reasons why Tesla leaped ahead and said guys we're gonna do that because otherwise nobody's gonna buy a Tesla anymore. Um, we've seen first off Huawei, Li Auto and so on um, and Xiaopong adopting end-to-end -end models as well as NIO which, which had some end-to-end -end applications um, already for some time, but now, and that's now bringing me to the update about NEO and the world, world model, the NWM, uh, is even leapfrogging that approach. So to sum it up, again, from an investor's perspective, we long thought that in the area of full self-driving, autonomous driving, there are a couple of modes and barriers to entry for competition, such as the amount of data, the amount of processing power and the technical approach, for example, geofenced versus end-to-end -end, and all of that proven by Tesla itself, how it's launched in China, I think are not really longer a mode that is there to kind of, you know, make yourself distinct from competition. And my bottom line here is everybody's going to have it. I think full self-driving, self-driving, autonomous driving, is likely to become a commodity in China. That's my my resume here. And now with um, NEO's world model being launched and um, we have some new videos on that as well, uh, the acceptance seems to be good. I think from what I'm hearing from uh, people who are using it, I haven't used it myself either, um, that it's still really, um, not still, that it's really a leap forward. It's um, an improvement to what they have had before and as I mentioned before also in my videos that it's a unique approach how NEO is looking to leverage the in-car processing power so we're not talking about the processing power of the uh, GPUs that are used in data centers in order to crunch algorithms and stuff now it's uh, about the actual edge device processing power in which NEO with the previous approach of the Atom supercomputer already had around 1000 tops of compute power versus for example Tesla around about uh, 100, 150 in the car. So, um, you know, NEO had always this advantage that they have the most powerful hardware in the car, but they haven't been using it so far. And now it seems with the new, uh, the uh, NEO world model, they are launching it and uh, in NEO fashion, making that backwards compatible even to the older models, the NT 2.0 pl uh, platform with the orange, orange chips, the NVIDIA chips still, but now the future for NEO is especially the self-made chips, um, which 
with the ET9 are coming, but now we've heard in the earnings calls also even coming to the Envo cars in the future. So long story short, the Chinese are catching up and NIO is one of them. And I think what NIO is pitching there uh, will actually be the, the final key performance indi indicator, which is safety. So NIO was never going out and said, um, look, we're going to work on FSD in order to launch our own um, full self-driving fleet, which is obviously Tesla's pitch to investors in which they are about to launch the, their uh, approaches uh, with a small fleet in, in Austin, Texas very soon. Um, no, instead, Neo always said we want to use FSD in order to free up time and to make the, the car journey more pleasant. And um, also the next back, uh, big factor is actually safety. So. All of that leads me to the conclusion that this might be the ultimate game in China when it comes to user acceptance of full self-driving. Uh, we have, especially with the Xiaomi car crashes, a big debate around safety and cars. So the quality of cars is now not only coming to the build quality, but also to the software quality. And in this regard, yes, um, localization, the more dense um, data and the better algorithms and the better software will ultimately be the, the factor where everybody can compete on. But I don't think that there's likelihood that uh, cars will come without such technology in the future because it's, uh, you know, there are some, some certain barriers to entry such as not having the data, not having the processing power, not having the right technical approach. I think that time is over from an investor's perspective. I think we cannot think that there is anything um, you know, protecting profits in that area. In fact, I think China in particular is where people are not willing to uh, pay upfront costs for something like FSD, whereas in the US pay what, in 10 thousands of euros, right? Uh, or dollars in order to uh, have FSD. Uh, in China, I think it's, uh, if we're lucky, we get subscription fees, monthly subscription fees, but also with competition being this intense, uh, it may actually also be just one of those hygiene factors in the car purchasing approach to get FSD on top or however each of these companies calling it. Um, and yeah, with that being said, I think if that's the, the case for uh, cars and autonomous driving, then most likely this will actually also extend to the robotics and automation um, part of another industry in a sense. Speaking of humanoid robots, uh, I don't see that there is a huge mode that can be protected um, based on these three points like the tech approach, the processing power, the data um, collected and stuff. Um, I rather think we will see many, many companies getting there actually. And uh, in effect, in a, uh, since NEO has now launched this uh, NEO world model, and they are ha having their own unique approach there, which seems to be competing well with the top three there, with Tesla, with Huawei, with Li Auto, and maybe Xiaopong. Um, given that, they should also think about getting into more application cases besides uh, autonomous driving, right? They should think of what they could do with Neo, uh, Nomi, Neo's Nomi, the digital assist, which is in some sort also a robot or a voice, an AI, which may need some type of a body that is going outside of the car, right? Um, because, you know, this technology is just available, so why shouldn't they use it for other application cases? But, you know, that's how I see this industry progress progressing here and um, you know, one thing that I still need to mention in this whole um, context level is of course the government and its influence uh, which I mentioned at the beginning uh, why I, I think there is also a connection to what Tesla is doing just right after Tesla launched a couple of weeks ago and I think that's not a coincidence we heard the um, Chinese government um, basically cracking down a little bit on all of these um, FSD efforts uh, by, by companies. So they are picking a fight with those companies who are marketing as something that it's really not. Uh, I think that has maybe to do with also some of those Xiaomi accidents. We also see, by the way, many Li Auto accidents where people possibly had um, self-driving engaged but crashed because of a you know, not observing the car as they should. And you know, especially in China where we have lots of first time buyers, um, 
people who really adopt technology, who are first time users, who are really you know, willing to try different stuff that possibly we in Europe wouldn't do because we're too conservative, because we're too afraid. In China they do that, but it also has sometimes those negative consequences that simply it can cause car crashes. And I think that's where the Chinese government is coming in and sees its role as a protector and also as a way of um, you know, keeping everybody safe. And in that regard, uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that this happened right after Tesla pushed ahead with a possibly worked around, not totally refined um, software solution still. Uh, of course, causing also that the whole Chinese competition is also going one leg further, right? And so now we see maybe a little bit of a more, um, yeah, uh, a little bit more oversight and less marketing and stuff. and that. Um, yeah, may actually also help to trickle down to this neo approach of focusing on safety. Don't promise too much, but trying to make the, the, the ride more pleasant, um, taking away some of the driver fat fatigue, um, automating some processes like for neo, for example, in the parking lot where neo now with um, the world model pushed a functionality which enables your car. Basically, you can talk with it like a normal person when you are in the parking garage. And it actually sees even parking lots that are not in your visible sight, possibly using LiDAR and other um, technologies in order to find parking spaces that are available and then um, automatically going there. And so now these are the solutions that I think we will see more over time and time. But from an investor's perspective, we really need to be cautious here of not seeing um, you know, some kind of unique advantages by either of the companies and um, thinking like this would actually help them to get to a winner's taking it all approach. I think that's unlikely, at least in China, but most likely that's also the sign for the world because China is leading, leading this market and their approaches. And so, yeah, that's my current updated views on these matters and how Tesla, NIO, and they all blend into that. I hope you enjoyed that. If so, please like this video, uh, make sure to be subscribed. If you really appreciate it, you could also think about becoming a member of this YouTube channel, uh, which I think is around 10 USD. And then you will also get access to some yeah, um, new videos that I'm only pushing usually with patrons. So thanks for watching. Have a great weekend and see you uh, in my next videos.